Hey Puzzlers, welcome to the crew. I'm Sea Lord Janda, and this is my let's play of Opus Magnum. This is a puzzle game by Zachtronics, a small indie developer. And I've started it once before, but never finished it. So I don't remember exactly where we got to, but I've reset my progress, and we're going to start from the beginning. And. Uh, you'll get an idea of how the puzzles work pretty quickly as we go through the tutorial section here. Transmutation lab rules. Access is restricted to graduate level alchemical engineering students and faculty only. Any acceptance must be approved by the chancellor. Keep your student alchemist permit and sigil with you at all times while in the lab. No food or drink is permitted in the lab. Do not sit or lean on transmutation engines or their related components. Please keep the area clean for everyone else. That means you, Anateus. Okay, so this is the Imperial University, so it's probably safe to say that we are a student at that university because this is the tutorial. Henley Servin. I'm amazed you put off learning how to use the transmutation engine for this long. I was concentrating on working by hand. You know that. Anateus Vea. Apparently he doesn't leave the area clean for others to use. Anateus, we're about to graduate. I know, that's why I need you to summarize all this for me as fast as you can. <laughs> hmm. We're a grad student, and apparently we don't know how to do the basic stuff yet, because we're a purist of some sort. Okay. These are reagents, the input materials for alchemy. This is the product you're trying to make. Your job as an alchemist is to build machines that combine reagents into useful products. To complete a puzzle, build all products. Press this button to start the engine. And this is the instruction tray. Instructions tell the machines parts what to do. All of the Zagtronics games, so far as I understand, are basically sort of coding adjacent, you might say. And that's also essentially what this is. So if you play, you'll see the machine is apparently already complete. That lever grabs that, puts two of those down, that transmutes that into that, and then, okay, yeah. So that's just sort of a demonstration of how the uh, whole system works, I think. We didn't actually have to do anything. Understand so far? Of course. I knew this part was easy. That's why I never worried about it. I count you as a friend, Anateus, but sometimes you carry your genius alchemist act a little too far. Act? Oh, we are an arrogant prick, huh? Arms. So let's take the first and most important part. The arm. I understand. What's next? <laughs> Wait, don't rush ahead. Let me go through the material. You need to see this. Okay, so we have, well, all right, place an arm below, setting the rotation and length so that the gripper's over the reagent, then add instructions to make it pick it up and move it to the product output. Okay, so we grab things, no, this is instructions, we grab the mechanisms from here. Okay, and we can just rotate it like then just the length like this. Ah, and we have two examples here already. We just are picking up elemental salt and putting it over here. And these are examples of how the instructions work. So it appears all we need to do is, let's see, grab, rotate, drop, rotate. Okay, so we grab, we're gonna need to rotate, how much does this rotate? 60 degrees, we need to rotate 180, so I think we need one, two, three, drop, and then technically you could do it either way, but I'm just going to keep rotating through, and then I guess it restarts. Let's see. Grab, rotate, 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 drop, rotate. 
rotate, rotate, rotate. Yeah, perfect. So that is how that works. Right. So arms pick up and move elemental proxies around the surface of the transmutation engine. Right. And you control their behavior with instructions. Yes, of course. Of course. Pivots. In some cases, you'll want an arm to rotate when it's gripping. You mean as opposed to the arm itself rotating? That's right. In those cases, you'll use pivot instructions. Well, Henley seems like a nice guy. I'm not sure if we are. Okay, so we want to... Oh, yes, I see. We want to... What'll the problem be? Hold on, let me... Oh, I see. When it rotates two... When it picks two up and moves them, it doesn't rotate them, so it'll end up not aligned. Gotcha. So we take an arm. We put said arm like this. We grab. Grab. We rotate clockwise, 60 degrees. We pivot. So, I guess, and we rotate it counterclockwise 60 degrees, and then we'll need to rotate the thing clockwise. Can it rotate through the arm, or is that a problem? Okay, it's literally an exact copy of the other one's instructions, which seems wrong. Have I done this all backwards? straightforward and simple. How nice that this is so easy for you. Why? How long did it take you to learn all this? Let's just keep going. The academy doesn't have the best and brightest in it, huh? Pistons. A piston arm is a special kind of arm that can extend and retract. And presumably there are instructions that control the piston? That's right. I'll demonstrate. Place a piston arm, make it pick up the reagent, and move to the product output. Pretty sure the other arm costs 20, so this must be more expensive. I guess we have limited budgets, I think. Or maybe we don't. I think from when I played part of it before that it's not really a limited budget so much as you're just being competitive with yourself, but yeah. Okay, so the existing ones, they pick up. They extend, or they retract. Like so. So we also pick up, we rotate uh, counterclockwise 120 degrees, because it's a nice hex-based system. And we retract one. And then, oh, the reset. Well, that's much simpler than bothering to program the whole uh, go back to where you start the thing. Yeah, okay. I see. Piston arms can reach areas you can't with a normal arm. That's what makes them so useful. They cost a little more than regular arms, though. And I can use the reset instruction to make an arm return to its initial state from wherever it is. That's convenient. And just remember the reset instruction takes the same amount of time it would issue those it would take to issue those individual instructions. Well, yes, of course it will. <laughs> of course. Tracks. What's next? 
Next we have tracks, which are like paths you can place on the board. It's easier to show you. And look at that. Create a track between the reagent and the product. Place an arm on the track. Have it pick up the reagent and move it to the product output. Alright, let's see our example. Two examples. Picks up. Moves. Drops. And then moves back. Apparently you can't use reset for Oh, no, you can. It just shows it in full there. Okay. So we put tracks here. I got a four. How's it going? We put tracks like so. We pick that up. We pick up. We move in the positive direction too. We rotate. So is that going to be 120 degrees? I think so. And then we reset. Yes? Flawless. Outstanding. I see. When you place an arm on a track, the arm can move forward or backward along the path. The tracks can be quite powerful, but I'm still learning how to use them effectively in my designs. Could you put multiple arms onto a single track? I think so. I never thought to try that. I'll have to experiment later. <laughs> oh boy. Transmutation. To reform transmutations, we use glyphs. For example, say I want to calcify an element. You'd place a glyph of calcification on the board and move the element you want to calcify over it. Anateus! I mean, yes, that's correct, but at least let me get through the explanation first. I got all the explanation I needed. Use a piston arm and a glyph of calcification to turn this fire atom into a salt atom. And then move it to the output. And over here they have water, which they... Oh, the glyph of calcification transmutes any of air, fire, water, and earth into salt. Unhelpful. Thanks, man. Glad you're enjoying. So, let's see. We pick up. We... Oh, we're going to need to modify our length, too. That's why we have a piston. Okay. We pick up. We rotate clockwise. 60 degrees. We retract. Oh, but also we have to put this in place. Probably right there. And then I think that'll do it. No? Yep. Outstanding. It's quite fast, this glyph. Yes, welcome to modern alchemical engineering. How many transmutations are available as glyphs? Most of the common ones so far. Yeah, I'm going to stream more airships, um... Probably after I get through Act 1 of this game, actually. So, pretty much right away. There's ongoing research to develop more, which you would know about if you paid any attention to recent developments in your field. Bonding. This must be the glyph of bonding. It is. To use it... Actually, why don't you show me how it works? Seems that's the way things are going here. Oh, very well. Use... Okay, that looks more complicated. Use two arms and the glyph of bonding to bond the two salt atoms together and move them to the product output. So how's this work? Grab. Move. Ah, and bond. And then... Move and drop. Okay, so I need two arms. I grab. I rotate. 60 degrees counterclockwise, or 60 degrees clockwise. And then they'll be bonded, so I need one of the arms to just drop. And the other one to keep rotating and then drop. Yes? 
Oh, but that's not. Um, okay, but I think I just need to rotate it then, I think. I don't think the other arm could do it better. No, it wouldn't be centered, so just... Um, Is it going to be off? Wrong. There we go. Okay, perfect, perfect. The transmutation engine makes alchemical engineering far simpler. You could have been using it the whole time. But I'm glad I did things the hard way for so long. I hope you're not like this in real life, Anateus. Hmm? This is real life. Stabilized water. I think that's everything you need to know to use the transmutation engine effectively. I'll make one more product to make sure I get it. Okay. Oh boy, now we're uh, actually able to do stuff. Building area, parts tray, and instruction tray can be panned by right-clicking and dragging your mouse. If I have a mouse with the scroll wheel, I can use that to vertically scroll through. Well, I guess that's not a given. People have laptops. Hell, I did until recently. Um, so I will place... Oh, I can place the products and reagents on my own, too, huh? Stabilized water is this. Here's my reagents. Okay, so let's see here. I need to bond them, but first I need to turn one into salt. So let's see, what's the best way to do that? Probably something like... this. So one will pick up. It'll rotate 120 degrees counterclockwise. And actually it'll just rotate straight through to 180 counterclockwise. I think that'll be perfect. And this will pick up, rotate 60 degrees clockwise, and then just leave it. Does timing matter here? Apparently not. Okay, well that's easy enough. Well, I'm right in with the average. Nice histograms. Apparently it's possible to be even, uh, even cheaper, but, uh... Oh, I'm also competing against my past self, but we'll ignore that. Alright. So what are your plans after you graduate? I think I'll be a head alchemist for one of the August houses. That's... Bold? Right out of school? Why not? True enough. No ambition could be too great for you. And yourself? I like it here. I think I'll stick around and hopefully become a professor. You do seem to have an affinity for teaching. I think so. Well then, may each of us realize his opus magnum. Oh boy, title drop. Opus magnum. Well, I've always found that to be a rather pretentious term, but I agree with the sentiment, at least. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Anateus Vea found something pretentious. Tell me more. Oh boy. Act 1. House Van Tassen. Life in a Great House. Imperial University, College of Alchemical Engineering. Dear Anateus, congratulations on your appointment to the position of head alchemist to the House Van Tassen. I'm very pleased to see you find a position in line with your talent and abilities. As you prepare to leave the academic advice uh, life, I want to offer a word of advice. 
The politics of the city are much harsher and more dangerous than those of the Academy. You're a singularly gifted talent, and I would hate to see you get caught up in these conflicts. The Alchemist's place is not to sink to the level of those around us, but to rise above them in service of our art. Best of luck to you. Nadine Ptolemeo, Professor and Chair, College of Alchem Chemical Engineering, Imperial University. Okay. Ooh. Concordia Lem. So how did it go? A nightmare. Armand kept going through his old stories about honor and righteousness. The Lady Van Tassen looks like she's embalmed. Frederick spilled food down the front of his shirt. What a brave man you are, surviving a formal dinner. It really is difficult, though. I can't stand the stuffiness. Armand didn't remember my name. Captain Gelt had to prompt him several times. But to be fair, you only started rather recently. Yes, I suppose it's too much to ask. Such a complicated, burdensome thing to remember one single name, the name of your new alchemist. The one who graduated at the top of his class from the College of Alchemical Engineering. Anateus. See, you remember my name just fine. I think Armand would know my name, keeping in mind I've been here my whole life. Then maybe next time you can go in my place. He might not even realize it's a different person. <laughs> hmm, alchemist, provisioner, which were you again? Oh, yes, hmm. <laughs> You'll get us in trouble. I've been doing this for years. Okay, apparently it's a very, um, incompetent sort of noble house. Hey, Jofu. Well, refined gold. Well, this is an odd first project. I feel like someone's having a laugh at my expense. <laughs> Why, were you asked to create the Philosopher's Stone? Close, actually. One more guess. Transform lead into gold? Yes. Apparently there's an old Van Tassen lead mine, and wouldn't it be better if it produced gold instead? Armand suggested it so casually. Sounds wonderful. Time to put your university degree to the test. Not that easy, huh? Let's see. The glyph of projection consumes an atom of quicksilver and promotes an atom of metal to its next higher form. By doing this repeatedly, even lead can be transmuted into the finest gold. Uh, no, get out of here, bro. Hold on. times do I have to transmute lead in order to turn it into gold? This is not the right orientation. This is, in fact, just Space Chem, but Alchemy, yes. Um, Space Chem is by the same developer, I'm pretty sure. Well, that's not quite right. I need this. And I put the quicksilver over here. And the lead right here. So. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. up, rotate counterclockwise, I believe, and then the other one, pick up, rotate clockwise, and then, is there like a repeat button? Yes. Something like that. I don't know how many times I have to do it, though. And then when it's done, I need this to just rotate once more. Okay, not enough time, apparently.
gold. Perfect. Was that the actual end of the inst- oh wait. Also, no, not perfect, but uh, if I just add this, then it's perfect, I think. This is probably not the most efficient way to do this, but I'm not a real stickler. Gold. Rotate. Drop. Eh, pretty good. I'm sure there's a way to do this with one arm, but... Eh. Eh. I mean... People were moderately more efficient, but at least I'm where the spike is. Can you make lead into gold? I can scarcely believe it. Well, at least it's finished with now. Like asking a fish if it can swim. You're taking this remarkably poorly, Anateus. I was just expecting a challenge, that's all. Sounds like you want a chance to show off. Well, I'm not sure I'd go that far. He wants a chance to show off, but that's okay. Thanks for watching, Alchemists. Hope you enjoyed. New parts will be up every other day, or you can watch live on Twitch. If you did enjoy, consider leaving a like or subscribing. Have a nice day, Alchemists. This is Sea Lord Genda, signing off.